Again, good morning. <laughs> In keeping with the spirit of Dr. Mark, I'd like to start with a joke. <laughs> Sister Mary was truly a religious woman. Besides her duties as a nun, she was also very active in various hospitals, visiting sick patients and taking care of all their needs. So it was no surprise that one day when she ran out of gas, the only container she could find to put gas into her car was a bedpan. <laughs> Sister Mary happily walked two blocks to the closest gas station, filled up the bedpan, and headed back to the car. Luck would have it that as Sister Mary started tipping the gas into the fuel tank, the traffic light turned red and she had quite a large audience. It created a spectacle. Just when she finished pouring in the last drops of the gas, a fellow opened up his window and hollered, I swear, if that car starts, I'm becoming a religious man. <laughs> In life, we are faced with the category of three different challenges at one time or another, financial, health, or relationship challenges. And when you are in the throes of one or even two of, it, of these challenges, it may feel like you can't see the light. What you now consider a challenge is now a springboard that is preparing you if we can shift our perspective and realize that worry, fear, or fretting is from our inner child. Please know that you are always taken care of. You are never without the companions of your spiritual energy and universal mind. So instead of trying to figure out everything by yourself, you can tap into the universal energy. You can trust that when you feel overwhelmed from a challenge or a small difficulty, it is awakening you, preparing you, allowing you to be supported and more conscious of that support in the aftermath of the challenge. Your very intuitive nature is profound. Anytime you think, I do not know, it is an illusion. All is known and you are supported. You are not an independent being. Universally, you are a collection of miraculous molecules and particles that are working in conjunction with the all that is. So go within. Your answer is there. Trust your intuition. When we allow ourselves to tap into this oneness, this universal nature, this godhood, this one energy, through meditation, conscious connection, intuition, we feel less and less feeling small, fearful, lost, or abandoned. Sometimes we experience these challenges to wake us up, to get us out of our own heads, to think of others and let go of dwelling on our own stuff. Another way to shift energy is to realize how vital you really are. You have a gift to give humanity. Service to humanity results in oneness. It brings hope and life to the downtrodden, the disheartened, and the disenfranchised. When people feel served, it speaks to their souls. It is really service to God. Sometimes we think our problems are insurmountable but there's always someone who needs us in some way or another. This spring, I decided to volunteer at two hospitals, doing chaplaincy work, visiting patients, and some would ask me to pray for them. What a wonderful experience this was as I was dealing with my own health challenges. The visit that stands out to me the most, and I'd like to share it with you, was there was a homeless lady that was hospitalized for some serious lung issues. She and her boyfriend had been sleeping in their car. And you know, it was pretty cold in the winter and into the spring. I bumped into her boyfriend as I was entering her room to visit. He said, 
I'm just coming from work. I said, from where? He said, on the corner of Glendale and a cross street. I don't remember the cross street. But what he meant was that he stood on the corner with a sign to ask for donations. I went in to visit and looked into her frightened eyes. She couldn't talk, so she wrote me a note, which read, am I going to be OK? And I immediately said, yes. The look on her face was relief. Her face softened. And then she wrote me another note asking me to pray for her, and I did. Later that week, she was released from the hospital, but not before the social workers got involved, finding resources to help her and her boyfriend get out of the car and find shelter from the cold. Service is one of the highest forms of giving. When we get bogged down in our own problems and stuff, we can get out and find ways to help and serve others. Your service to others will bring you a sense of joy and personal satisfaction, and it gets us out of our whining and drama. When I was a kid, my mother used to say, if you cry because you have no shoes, you'll see a man who has no feet. Every time she said it, it would give me pause and a chance to reflect on all the things I needed to be grateful for. As Dr. Mark says in Science of Mind, we realize that God is all, in all, of its creations. Everyone is a divine idea in the mind of God. Knowing this, we know that serving another human being is serving God. Service to humanity is not a lofty goal. Humanity means caring for others and whenever possible. Humanity means to help others at times when they need help the most. Humanity means forgetting our selfish interests at times when others need help. Humanity means extending unconditional love to each and every living being on earth. A perfect example of this, have you ever seen the show, What Would You Do? I love that show so much, I tape it every Friday. They reenact situations that have been in the headlines, in the news, like uh, the black student wrestler whose coach made him cut off his dreads to be on the team, or the transgender, transgender woman who wanted to use the ladies' room, or the black babysitter of two white kids who had the police called on him in a restaurant. Well, last week, the actors did a bit about a man who goes to a milkshake shop at first, he pretends that he lost his glasses and can't read the sign behind the counter. And then the server places a paper menu in front of him, and he finally admits that he can't read. The server hurls a ton of insults at him, like, this is 2019. How old are you? Why can't you read? The customers are appalled. They jump in and serve him by reading the menu of all the flavors. They call out the rude server. They look for the manager. This happened repeatedly. And it's just a wonderful show because you see good-hearted people doing what is right and humane. The last person was an educator, and she let the server have it, and then explained that some people, even today, aren't able to get an education some had to drop out of school to do work, to feed their families, and, have, and some have medical diagnosis. When John Keonis came out with the cameras, she burst into tears. It's a wonderful show, and it demonstrates the best in people, seldom the worst in the human heart. It warmed my heart to see how many people were willing to help this man read, and several said that they had relatives that couldn't read. There is an anonymous quote, a man can live for himself and only serve to make himself secure, but he becomes human only when he serves others, tries to make them comfortable, secure, and happy. To serve humanity is to serve God, and service before self 
brings out the importance of social service. When I read this quote, the first person to pop into my mind was Mother Teresa. She said, love is a one-way street. It always moves away from self in the direction of the other. Love is the ultimate gift to, of ourselves to others. When we stop giving, we stop loving. When we stop loving, we stop growing. And unless we grow, we will never attain personal fulfillment. We will never open out to receive the life of God. It is through love that we encounter God. Where there is love, there is God. Service to humanity can change the world one person at a time. Gandhi changed the world. He led India's independence movement in the 1930s and 40s, speaking softly without carrying a big stick, facing down the British with stirring speeches and nonviolent protests. His famous quote is, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Martin Luther King changed the world as an activist and pastor who promoted and organized nonviolent protests. He played a pivotal role in advancing civil rights in America and won a Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts to fight racial inequality in a nonviolent manner. He said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. <laughs> because of him and Rosa Parks, I no longer have to sit in the back of the bus. <laughs> You too can change the world, no matter how much you go through, no matter what your challenges are, you can still be of service. You cannot be fully alive without the relationship of others. We are made for love and to be united in giving and receiving with others. If we close ourselves off to service, we will never create the space within ourselves to be fulfilled with the love of God. Ask yourself, do you see God in each and every human being? If you don't see God in everyone, you can start now. We can all make a contribution to society. If not with money, we can give our time. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. There are so many opportunities. Perhaps you like pets. Animal shelters look for volunteers. Hospitals look for volunteers. Kids foundations like the Boys and Girls Club of America. Los Angeles Rescue Mission is a good one. The Giving Spirit, food pantries, local libraries, YMCA, Habitat for Humanity, and one that I love, Project Angel Food, because it deals with food, of course. <laughs> And if transportation is an issue, we, are, we have so many service opportunities that we offer here, right here at the church. We have the Helping Hand Ministry with Gail Pilat. Uh, we help North Valley Caring Center with donations, food and clothing. The red bins are out on the patio. We have the women's group and men's group, animal kinship, pastoral care, and we always need volunteers to work in the junior church. There's a list of volunteer opportunities and ministries that you can serve on the welcome table. Please stop by and take a look and see if something pulls at your heart. Remember, there are 10 good reasons to volunteer. Number one, you make a difference. Every person counts. Number two, volunteering encourages civic responsibility. You invest in your community. Number three, you get a chance to give back. Number four, you learn a lot. Number five, volunteering strengthens your community. Number six, it promotes personal growth and self-esteem. Number seven, it brings people together. Number eight, volunteers gain professional experience. Number nine, it saves resources. And 10, it's good for you. 
<laughs> Volunteering provides physical and mental rewards. Experts report that it reduces stress and that when you focus on someone other than yourself, it interrupts usual tension producing patterns. It makes you healthier, improves moods and emotions like optimism, joy, and control over one's fate, and it strengthens the immune system. Just know that whatever you may be experiencing in relationships, health, or in finance, you are loved by the Most High. Ernest Holmes, our founder, quotes, takes a quote from the Bible. He said, God cares for the birds who do not gather into the barn. So shall he care for those who trust and do not doubt. But we ought to seek the kingdom first. Jesus bade us to completely trust God for everything and in every instance. Have no fear of tomorrow. Enjoy today. Refuse to carry the corpse of a mistake yesterday. So I'd like to leave you with this thought to trust God completely with your life and affairs. And as Dr. Mark always says, your problems did not come to stay. This too shall pass. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Let us pray. Turning within to the true essence of who we are, divine emanations of God, all connected on the seen and unseen side of life, knowing that there is only one of, he, one of us here expressing in myriad forms as one mind and one power. I know that I am one with the infinite. I absolutely know that everyone here and those who are not are uniquely expressing as only the divine as they can. I know that wherever we are, God is because God is not separate from its creation. We are divine. We are made in the image and likeness of the creator. Therefore, we are creative. Since we know we are one with all that is, we know there is healing. We know there is abundance. And we know that we can choose to co-create relationships of harmony and balance. And we can serve in ways that heal us and others. We bless our families. We recognize the God in them. And we serve them with love and kindness because we realize that we are all one and a part of the integral whole. We know that we can change our minds and change the world one person at a time. We bless all churches, respecting everyone's path to God. Temples, mosques, ashrams, we bless those that pass our way. We see the light of God in them. We give thanks that all our needs are met on time and we can let go and seek to serve others. And I give thanks for this realization that no man or woman is an island and we are never separate. We are all cut from the same cloth. For this and the greater yet to be, I give thanks. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen.